Okay, I just wanted to highlight what it looks like when you have cats that you have submitted their DNA on and the results are ready for you. So this is, I'm in my account right now and you can see that I have paid and had several cats done. Um, I'm just going to show you Willie today. Um, as I would tell my students in a class, go in here, click on things, you can't break or do anything, change results. So it's just kind of a uh, really invaluable experience that we have here. I'm going to click on that heart with the then the 16 matches just to show you um, what it's showing me. I've got a Maine Coon and it talks about the <clears throat> this is a breeder tool so cats that you know would be um, good in terms of breeding partners for genetic diversity and you can kind of see the numbers here. Um, personally what I use it for more than anything is when looking at the actual results, which I'm guessing is probably what you want to do as well. Not that this is all very, very useful, but this is probably the first area I go to. Here's just an overall summary of the cat, and I'll give you a second. You can kind of screen through here and see everything. But when you're actually ready to look at the individual results, then I'm going to look at disorders. And again, I'll kind of scroll through here slowly so you can see the different things, at least for my Maine Coon that he was screened for. And then down here, as you can see, there's in addition to all of this, there is 35 additional mutations that um, he's been tested for. They're all clear, but you can show all the results if you'd like, or you can hide them. And so you'll see, uh, for instance, for HCM, the test recognizes he's a Maine Coon. And so up here on, under the known disorders in, uh, for my breed, that's the HCM, MYBPC3 mutation that we're aware of. Uh, but down here, he was also tested for the mutation that's been found in the ragdoll. So that's great. I'm not exactly sure what no call means here under this, um, but I'm sure at some point we can figure that out. I'm not terribly concerned. It was still listed under the um, normal results section. So, so look at all these amazing tests that were done on my cat. All right, <clears throat> then you can, from there you can look at blood type of your cat, different traits. So for instance, um, I had also done this same panel at UC Davis, and I'm thrilled to report that, of course, all the results are the same. But it's really interesting to look at the information. Here's genetic diversity, so my poor Willie, 34.2%. Um, you can see how that compares to just a randomly bred cat. So not quite as good um, as 39%, but he's a pedigree cat coming from show lines. So. Now, that does differ a little from what's shown in paw pads, for those that are familiar with paw pads. In paw pads, um, it lists a coefficient of inbreeding where it actually you know, knows the parentage all the way back to, I believe it's foundation for Willie. And he's about, I think it's 16% coefficient of inbreeding, so not to be confused by those two differences. This is just a lot of fun here. I love this, and I've heard a lot of people, other people like this as well. This are, these are genetic relationships, so other Maine Coons in different parts of the world, and how they relate to Willie. And let me, oops, let me scroll down. You can see what the colors all mean as well, and <clears throat> Willie is in this. Willie's right there. I just think it's really cool. This is a lot of fun. Now, these aren't Willy offspring that have been placed all over the world. Um, the only Willy offspring that I'm aware of are, uh, would be in the United States that have been in this test. Um, maybe other. He's got an offspring in Denmark and an offspring in Germany. Uh, I guess there is Germany, but um, I don't think that cat's been in a study yet. So. Um, how far out these are in terms of relationships to Willie, my cat. I'm not exactly sure, but they have some genetic similarities. And then we're back to the breeder tool.